Here's a short explanation of the card game Sushi Go Party. The game from Game Right is for two to eight players, ages eight and up. The average game time is about 20 minutes, with the objective of the game to have the highest score at the end of three rounds. Here's what's in the box. 181 playing cards, 22 menu tiles, eight pawns, and the game board. To set up, place the game board in the center of the playing area. Each player chooses a color pawn and places it on or near the starting marker of the game board. If this is your first time playing, divide all of the cards according to the type. Place them in the slots like this. You can either choose one of the pre-selected menus or, as a group, decide which of the menu items should be in play for the game. You will need one roll, two specials, three appetizers, and one dessert. Once you have decided on the menu items, find the menu cards for those items and place them on the board. If you are playing with six to eight players and you have chosen Maki rolls, place the tile to show that it is for a six to eight player game. In a two player game, do not choose the spoon or edamame. In a seven to eight player game, do not choose the menu or special order. Now go through the cards, finding all of the cards that match those menu items. Any cards not on the menu stay in the box. Shuffle the chosen dessert cards and place them face down to the side of the board. Take all of the other chosen cards and shuffle them together. Once shuffled, place them face down near the board. This game is played over three rounds. Before each round, you will need to shuffle the appropriate amount of dessert cards based on the number of players. Here is a breakdown of how many dessert cards are needed for each round. So for example, let's say we have five players. We will draw five dessert cards for round one and shuffle them into the main deck of cards. Now, we will need to deal the appropriate amount of cards to each player based on the number of people playing, which you can see here. In our example of a five-player game, we will need to deal nine cards to each player. Place the remaining cards back to the side of the board. Players can now look at their cards, but do not show them to the others. Now we're ready to play. Everyone takes their turn at the same time in this game. Players will need to choose one card in their hand that they wish to keep for their play. They should lay that card face down in front of them. They now pass the rest of the cards to the player on the left. Once all players have done this, everyone reveals the card that they wish to keep. And they can now pick up the cards that have been passed to them. Now the process repeats itself. Pick a card, lay it face down, pass the rest of the cards to the left. As you're revealing the cards you have chosen to keep, you will want to organize them by type, which will help you in the scoring at the end of the round. Most cards only score at the end of the round, but there are some extras and bonuses depending on the types of menu items that are in play during the game. We'll go over some of these in just a little while. Once all of the cards have been played, this ends the round. First, take your dessert cards and place them to your side. You will keep these till the end of the game and they only score at the end of the game. Next, you'll need to go through your sets of cards to see how many points you have scored. Move your pawn along the scoring area for each set that you have scored on. Once all players have completed scoring, take all of their cards, except the dessert cards, and return them to the deck. Now it's time to start round two. Before shuffling the deck, draw out from the dessert deck the appropriate amount of cards for round two. For our example of a five-player game, we need to draw three additional dessert cards. Add those to the deck of playing cards and shuffle well. Now deal out the cards to the players based on the number of people playing the game. Again, for our five-player game, we deal nine cards. Play the second round exactly as the first round. When the second round is complete, follow the same steps in order to start the third round. And once the third round is over, it's time to start the final scoring. In addition to scoring your normal hand of the third round, you will also need to score your dessert totals 
that you have collected for the game. Once all players have scored their final hand and desserts, the game is over, and the player with the highest score is the winner. Now let's break down each of the menu items. Wasabi is used to bring a little extra heat to your nigiri. When you play a wasabi card, the next nigiri that you play will be worth three times its normal amount. A wasabi with no nigiri scores zero. Nigiri is used for every game and it's real easy to score. Egg is worth one point, salmon is worth two points, and a squid is worth three points. So if you place a nigiri on a wasabi card, it is worth three times as much. Maki Rolls At the end of the round, all players compare the total amount of Maki Rolls shown on their cards. In a 2 to 5 player game, the player with the most scores 6 points. The second most gets 3 points and all other players get 0. This will score differently in a 6 to 8 player game. Tamaki At the end of the round, players compare their total Tamaki. The player with the most gets 4 points. However, the player with the least loses four points. If there is a tie on either end, tying players get the full amount. Yudamaki. These are scored during the round. The first player to reach 10 units scores eight points. The next player scores five points, and the third player scores two points. If there is a tie, both players get the full amount of points. Dumplings. The more you eat, the more you get. You can score up to 15 points if you have five or more dumplings at the end of the round. Eels are an acquired taste, so if you only play one, you will lose three points. But if you play two or more, you get seven points. Edamame are not used in two-player games probably one of the trickier cards to score. You score one point per opponent with any edamame for each of the edamame cards that you have played. For example, you play three edamame. The other players have two, one, and zero respectively. So you total the amount of the other players who also have edamame. In this example, there are two other players than you that have edamame. So, two times three of your cards is six points. The player with two cards would score four points, and the player with one card scores two points. The most you can score per card on edamame is four points in games with more players. Miso Soup when it is played, if any other player also plays miso soup at the same time, then all of the players who played the miso soup will discard those cards immediately. If you are the only player to play miso soup, then it remains in your play until the end of the round where you will score three points per soup. Sashimi. If you only play one or two sashimi, you score nothing. Play three and score 10 points. You may play multiple sets to score more points. Tempura. Similar to sashimi, play only one and score nothing. Play two and score five. You may play multiple sets to score more points. Tofu. You need to eat only the right amount. Play one and score two. Play two and score six, but play more and score nothing. Onigiri. There are four different types of onigiri. Collect one and score one. Collect two and score four. Collect three and get nine. And if you have one of each type, you get 16. You can have multiple sets of onigiri to score more points. Chopsticks will allow you to take two cards from a future turn. First, you play the chopsticks like any other card. Then later, you can choose two cards from a future hand. When you do this, take the chopsticks card and then place it into the hand that you are passing to the left. A chopsticks card at the end of the round is worth zero. The menu is only used in two to six player games. When you play the menu card, you get to draw the top four cards from the deck. 
choose any one of those cards to play. Return the other three cards and the menu card back to the deck and shuffle. You cannot play a second menu card in the same turn. Soy Sauce. When you play the Soy Sauce card, at the end of the round, if you have the most different types of colors in play, you will score four points per soy sauce card played. Only the desserts cards played in that particular round are counted. If you do not have the most different colors, you score nothing. The spoon cannot be used in a two-player game. When the spoon is initially played, nothing happens. Then, on a later turn, when players are looking at their hand, the player with the spoon says, Spoon! And asks the player on the left for a particular card. If they have it, they must turn it over, and they receive the spoon in its place. If the player on the left does not have the card looked for, continue around the table. A spoon played at the end of the round is worth zero. The special order is used for a two to six player game. A special order card, when played, will copy one of your already played cards. So for example, you have a squid nigiri with wasabi and that's worth nine points. You can place the special order on that and now you duplicate that order for an additional nine points. The takeout box allows you to flip over as many cards as you wish. These cards will no longer be worth their face value, but instead two points per card that is flipped over. These are ideal for cards that may not score you points at the end of the round. T is scored at the end of the round on your largest single color pile. It adds one point per card that is in that pile. So for this example, you have four nigiri in this round. It is your largest stack, so the T is worth Four points. Finally, we get to dessert. Green tea ice cream. If you only have one, two, or three total at the end of the game, it's worth zero. If you have four, then it's worth 12 points. You can have multiple sets to score more points. Pudding. At the end of the game, players count how many puddings they have. The player with the most will score six points. The player with the least is minus six. If there is a tie on either end, the tying players get the full points. Fruit. There are three different kinds of fruit. For each type of the three, you can score points. Here is a look at how fruits are scored. Well, that was definitely a lot to digest, but now you know the basics, so let's play.